Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you, Leon, and thank you for inviting me to be here with you today. Um, as part of Penn State Extension in Lancaster County, the um, home horticulture questions fall to the master gardeners. And I'll tell you a little bit about our program at the end, but Spotted Lanternfly has now become one of our projects because it has been found in Lancaster County, and you know, I'll, I'll go over that with you. And I understand your theme today is Farmer's Day, which was um, uh, set in place by the late Max Smith. And this is really a perfect topic because the more you know about this pest and can help control it, the more you will be helping farmers. The Pennsylvania mm -hmm. Department of Agriculture is very concerned about the impact that this pest will have on farms. And I will go over exactly you know, wh which types of crops it could impact. So this is not exactly the beginning, so let me back up a little bit. Okay, so here we have it, the spotted lanternfly. How many of you have already heard about this pest, heard something about it? Okay. Um, it's, it's been on the news quite a bit because we sort of know it's been coming this way from a little bit to the east of us. Um, kind of like the snow. <laughs> uh, its um, Latin name is there, and the, the white um, is the name of the person who um, discovered it, I guess you could say. So that's, that's actually someone's name and not a color in this case. Um, this presentation was put together by an extension educator who is really in the thick of this in Montgomery County. I, think, I believe she even lives closer to where the spotted lanternfly was first discovered. And um, it was also, um, uh, contributions were made by Tim Elkner, who works in our office, who um, actually does the commercial um, side of advising people and doing um, uh, projects, research projects. There's a lot, these are really long to remember, but if you search lot, Spied Lanternfly, you'll find a lot of information about it, either under the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture or um, Penn State Extension, so enough said there. So here it is. Um, a lot of times when you see pictures of it, it looks like the insect at the top left, um, but in reality, when you would see it in person, uh, it for real, it would be folding its wings over its back like the other two pictures of it. And that spot of red, you would only see it when it, when it flies. So it is a member of, a, of the plant hopper family. It is not a butterfly. I know what a lot of times when people show it, you're like, oh, it's, it's, it looks like such a pretty butterfly, but it really isn't even a, mat, a member of the family that butterflies and moths are in. So it's a, it's a different type of insect. Um, there are native plant hoppers that are not invasive and not destructive. Um, and all of them pierce, eat by piercing. They pierce plants and that, that's how they eat. They think that their common name lanternfly came from some of them that kind of look like they're, they're sort of holding a lantern uh, at the end of uh, almost looks like a nose, so that, that's where the name came from. And here's, here's another really beautiful member of the family. Um, the, the circled part there is the proboscis, which is where, what it uses to eat and pierce plants. So this is why it's such a problem here. It really does not need to be or it does, doesn't belong here in Pennsylvania. It was discovered in Berks County in 2014. And they think that it's been here a while longer than that. And the, the way that they figured that out was looking at the egg cases, which we'll see more about. But they see, it seemed like they had been here a while before people really started to notice the insect and notice what it was doing. Um, it is native to parts of Asia. And uh, one of the other places where it's become very destructive is South Korea. 
So we do not know how it got here. Um, I understand there, there's like a, an importer, not necessarily of nursery stock, but um, could have been like wooden materials or things like that that was near where it was discovered. And I think perhaps it came on maybe packing material or something that was imported. So you can see here where, where it is native, um, those, those places on the map that are blue, um, China, Bangladesh, Vietnam. I have not heard as much about it being extremely destructive in Japan, um, but it does seem to have caused quite a problem in South Korea. And so the lines that you see on the map there are not necessarily the end of its range, but it's just where it's known to be now. So it could uh, go further north, it could go further south, but that, that's just where it happens to be. So this, this insect um, changes quite a bit from an egg to an adult, like many insects do, and each of those stages is called an instar. It doesn't completely metamorphize like a butterfly when it, when it has, um, or a moth that has a cocoon and changes completely. But it does change quite a bit and molts in between each stage. So if you look at the, you know, it's sort of like at one o'clock, you see the eggs. And we'll look at those a little more closely so you kind of know what to look for because that's a good way to get rid of these insects is just kind of catch the eggs. Um, then the um, larvae are kind of attractive too. They're, they're black with white spots and they, they change um, three times and then the last generation before it becomes an adult is, is red with white spots and then it changes to the adult that we saw earlier and that is the phase that lays the eggs. So it goes through that whole phase in one season. And they've been known to feed on over 70 types of plants. Um, so you can see a list of, of some of the things that they will um, pierce and suck the, um, the phloem, which is some of the nutrients that are in the plants. Their hosts, and that, that means what we think they might need in order to lay their eggs, are the um, Alantha saltissima, which is the tree of heaven. Also, like the, the, if you think of the uh, novel, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, that's, that's that tree that grows very, very quickly. It in itself is invasive, so it's not, you don't want that plant either. But unfortunately it also, um, we think black walnut is a host and also hops, which is not good news for my cascade hop vines in my, my yard. And here's just a, a bunch of different plants that they seem to be feeding on and this too isn't good news to think that they, they, there's some other things that they might destroy that might be in your your own gardens at home basil blueberry cucumbers they tend to like things with a high sugar content I'm glad everyone's already eaten. <laughs> this is the least attractive picture of a spotted lanternfly. But uh, what you can see there with the arrows, that's the long proboscis that it uses to pierce um, into like through bark of a tree and suck the nutrients out of the tree. And when they do that, um, there's parts of the, of the sap, as it were, that they can't use. So they secrete that, and it's something called honeydew. And you might have noticed like aphids will leave a honeydew on plants that's sticky, and it tends to kind of attract other things that you don't want. The honeydew from spotted lanternfly can be so thick that it can fall almost like rain. And I've, I've heard like some of the graduate students and people who kind of have been out working around this insect, um, you have to wear goggles because the, the honeydew is so thick. And the bad news about that is that then provides an environment for mold, and you can see black mold at the bottom of the picture. I gotta, that actually was a video, which I don't think is gonna work, but of, of it just almost raining honeydew. These are, um, uh, hornets, 
attracted to the honeydew. So that's another, another thing besides the mold that the honeydew attracts, it also attracts stinging insects, which kind of has realtors concerned about areas where this insect is going to take up residence because it can make an outside environment very unpleasant, even if you're not actually a farmer and worried about a crop. So these are some of the things that it can have a really detrimental effect on and how important they are to Pennsylvania. Hardwoods, apples, peaches and grapes are all things that we supply quite a lot of in, in the state and the spotted lanternfly really does feed on these things. Um, one of the things that the spotted lanternfly have been known to do here in Pennsylvania that they've not seen them do anywhere else is to, is to actually fly. They do have wings, but most of the time they sort of hop, but they can kind of pick up as a group and swarm from one place to another, and that's how they're moving around the state. Um, here's quite a, quite a few on the trunk there of this apple tree. Um, many on these grapevines here. So besides really the, the detriment to the plant because they're feeding off the plant, at a crop like grapes is very hard to, to wash. Like you can't, once you'd have a lot of honeydew on the grapes, they're pretty much ruined. You can't really sell those or use those for wine making. Um, this is um, an ailanthus tree that has died. Now, it's, it took a few years, but, you know, you start to see trees dying. This is a black walnut sapling, and if you, you can see there's quite a few of the larvae sort of in, its, in there against the trunk. I guess I have a pointer here. Yeah. Um, and by August, this plant was, was starting to, to show the yellow leaves of autumn and, you know, kind of dying back from all the spotted lanternfly feeding on it. And there's dye back at the tops of these black walnuts. It's a little hard to see with the lights. And, and at the tops of this tree. So there, you know, the trees do not die quickly, but it does seem like after a, a, a year you know, two or three years, they are having an effect. And it's one of the things that um, people are studying, especially Penn State Extension, is like how fast is it, is it really going to make something die? It's certainly affecting the yield of uh, plants like peaches, apples, grapes. Um, this is someone's outdoor steps on their deck, and the, all the black you see there is from the honeydew from spotted lanternfly. So again, as I was saying, the realtors are kind of concerned because if you have a lot of trees in your property and, and the spotted lanternfly really take hold, it, it's going to be very hard on your outdoor um, living spaces. Now here's a bunch of adults swarming on the side of a of a house, of a chimney. The, the kind of good news, I guess, is that they're not an insect that's going to get in your house and be a, a problem there, like the um, stink bugs, the brown marmalated stink bugs that are kind of like just got into your house and were everywhere for a while. I, I, as far as where I live, they seem to have moved on a bit. But spotted lanternfly do not tend to do that. That's not one of their behaviors. But they're probably, with this many at the end of the season where you'd see a lot of adults, that would, if you would see them, that would be a good place to look for the eggs that they lay. So this is um, a map in 2015. The blue are places in Pennsylvania where they checked for the presence of spotted lanternfly. Um, the red are places where they actually found them. And a lot of the places on the map that are blue are vineyards because they're scattered around, about in Pennsylvania. So this is um, as of fall of 2017 when the season ended. Uh, this is where the red again is where they have been found and the green again are places where they checked. And as a close-up, you can see that now 
Lancaster County is in Lebanon. We're in that area. These are all places where people have actually sp found spotted lanternfly. So with, there was a, a quarantine so that we can try not to spread this, this insect around as much as possible. Uh, for a while it was by township in Lancaster until I, I would say maybe the beginning of last summer it was that way, but now entire counties are in quarantine areas. And I'll kind of explain what that means then and how you can help with that in just a bit. So our county is part of the quarantine area. So here we see the, uh, the nymphs. Uh, I just want to check exactly what, <laughs> what point I wanted to make here. So just to kind of go through the life cycle again, this is what you would see first, then this is the fourth um, instar as they get bigger and bigger. And then toward the, the end of a summer, you would start to see adults and the fourth instar at the same time. They don't all turn at the same time. So they're not actually all that difficult to kill. They don't, they don't have really tough exteriors. There are, and I'll show you that there are pesticides that will work on them. It's just that there's so many of them. Just their sheer numbers makes it, makes it really hard to control them. And you can see all these, these trees are just covered with spotted lanternfly. So on the left is an adult laying eggs, and um, she's, the eggs are underneath this white substance that she's spreading over them to protect them. It then turns dark, so it makes it really hard to see. It almost looks like somebody just put paint on something, on a tree, or, or I'll show you some other things that they will lay eggs on. Um, there, those are eggs in the center of that picture on the right. And again, uh, on the left, um, you'll see a tree on the left side of the left picture, and those are, those are all eggs, those kind of splotches on the tree. Those are not so hard to see, and they're kind of all together, but if you look at the picture on the right, there are egg cases there, too, and they're, they're really hard to see. You don't, unless you were looking for them, you really wouldn't notice them. And they will lay their eggs on pretty much anything that doesn't move for a while. So there's um, debris in this yard here, and you can see the eggs on this piece of wood. They can lay them on tires, on rocks, um, even cars. So when you're going in and out of a quarantine area, even your cars, um, assuming most of you live here in Lancaster, it's something to keep an eye on, especially you know if you haven't maybe you had a car you haven't driven for a while or something and you know it's the end of the summer when they're laying eggs. These are just eggs on rocks even. I have some more of these calendars if anybody's interested they just sort of show the life cycle and what you what you should be looking for. I mean it's kind of what you might expect, they, 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 the eggs go over the winter and then they start with the young larva stages in the spring and the adults by the end of the summer and then by early fall they're laying eggs again. So it's, it's pretty much what you'd expect, but I did bring a few of these along if anybody really wants, wants to keep track of this. And as an invasive insect from another part of the world, they don't have any natural enemies that would help keep them in balance. Now one thing that they found that there's a few insects that are opportunistic that will, or an arachnid in the case of the spider here, they, they will eat them, but they're not really making a big impact on the population. So we see a spider, this is an assassin bug here, and um, a praying mantis. One of the best ways to get rid of a lot of them is to scrape the eggs. So keep your eyes open. It's, I think maybe it's going to be by 2019 that you're really going to be seeing a lot of these eggs in the county. But you can scrape the eggs, you can double bag them and throw them away or scrape them into rubbing alcohol or like hand sanitizer, which is pretty much the same thing. And that would take care of quite a few of them before they ever become adults. 
And out in the, at the registration table, there's a whole bunch of little credit card looking things that have facts about the spotted lanternfly, and those are things that you can use to scrape the eggs, or you can just use a, um, a palette knife or something like that too. Um, another way that they are being controlled is with sticky bands around trees. These bands, whoops, these bands are being distributed by the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture in places where they're, where they're really bad. Probably garden centers, if it really be, starts to become a huge problem, will start to sell them too. But the bands around trees, as they, as they kind of crawl up and down the trunks of the trees, really do catch quite a lot of them. So they've had pretty good success with those. And th you can see the little nymphs there getting stuck on the, um, the sticky bands. They estimate that so far they've destroyed about a million of them by using these sticky bands. And they are very sticky. Now they, the adults sometimes will will be able to bypass them, or they seem to, they would get stuck, they seem to be avoiding them more than the, the, the younger stages of the spotted lantern plot. The other thing is with ones that are very sticky, this, this is a sticky band that has kind of a cover over it because they found there were other th beneficial things getting stuck to, even in some cases small birds getting stuck on these bands, so they're not without their flaws. And there are insecticides that will, will kill them. And your, your local landscapers are all getting up on this too. I mean, they're gonna know what you can use and what will kill them. So they, they'll, be, they'll be a good resource for homeowners. Um, these are not brand names, but you, know, you can see that there are things that, that will kill them. Some of you might have heard of neem, which sometimes has kind of a reputation of being sort of a, a more organic type insecticide that that's sometimes effective we think perhaps it might be the fresher it is the more effective it is on spotted lanternfly and legally you're not supposed to use insecticides or pesticides on things that they're not uh, they're, they're not described for so but you won't be able to go in a store now and find something that says this is for use on spotted lanternfly. You will find things that say they're for use to kill insects on ornamental plants, and then that, would, that is something that's okay to use. Uh, at the bottom there are some things that you, you might have heard, uh, neonicotinoids, and like, oh, that, that's bad, I don't want to use that. That's because they're systemic and they will kill everything, including <coughs> the bee population, which we don't want to kill. But there's a way that those are being used that, that's fairly safe and will kill the spotted lanternfly. And that's by using trap trees. These are um, Alanthus, or the Tree of Heaven trees. And those will, since those are so attractive to the spotted lanternfly as a host plant, those can be used to trap them. So what they're kind of encouraging people to do is to get rid of as many of those as you can, since they too are an invasive plant. Um, leave a male, which this one that's marked in, with the red X is a male, so it won't have seeds and spread, and then treat that tree with a systemic, systemic insecticide, and that would be effective at, for killing spotted lanternfly. And this, this, uh, there are a bunch of them dead at the bottom of a, a treated tree. So those, what I was describing is integrated pest management. Um, so especially the sticky bands or leaving a trap tree, those are things that are just kind of taking the behavior of the insect and using it against it. So these are, are things we can do, avoid moving them around. And one of the thing, other things I brought are quarantine instructions that are out on your table. So I encourage you to pick those up so you kind of know how to be responsible about moving things around or not moving things around. Um, removing the Alanthus trees, sticky bands. Um, it's always good to encourage beneficial insects. It's probably not going to have a direct effect, but it's always a good thing to do. And be careful when you use a pesticide. Don't over. Don't use more than is specified. Don't use it for something it's not rated to be used on. Um, just a reminder that you know if you're leaving the quarantine area. Um, 
that, is there anybody here who's not from Lancaster, or not from one of the quarantine counties? Because I know there's guests here. Okay, so if you're not from an area where you know it already exists, um, if you do see it, there's, a, I would just Google it, like what should I do if I saw one in Pennsylvania? It's, it's badbug.gov, and they do want you to report it. Here in Pennsylvania, well, we don't really need to report it to the Department of Agriculture, but I'll tell you what you can do. Um, so the quarantine is for eggs, adults, larvae, the whole thing. And, and at the bottom, the last point about compliance agreements, um, people who are making their living by agriculture and the nursery business are probably going to have to have permits for moving things around just be, so we're not you know, defying the quarantine or even just taking something from a, like, Lancaster, we know it's in Lancaster, but we don't want to bring a whole bunch from Berks County into Lancaster County and make it worse. And that's why landscapers will have to um, go through some permitting processes so they don't do that. And again, here, here are some of the things that the eggs especially could be living on that you want to be careful about moving around, if you're, especially if you're moving something out of Lancaster County into one of the counties that's not in the quarantine area. Okay, I'll take a few questions, but I just want to tell you a little bit about the Master Gardeners and what we do. We are a volunteer program. And this is our mission. So we really want to use the information from Penn State to help consumers with their, with their gardening and, and just helping the environment by advising people on the best practices. Um, as Leon mentioned, we do have a horticulture garden hotline where we answer questions. And I brought some business cards along for that if you have questions about spotted lanternfly or anything else, you're welcome to call or email. We have gardens around Lancaster where we work with people and you know kind of teach them about how they can garden. We work with the Youth Intervention Center, Bar Barnes Hall, some of you might know it as. Um, Conestoga View with um, people who are older or, or for some reason need assistance with everyday life. Uh, Lancaster County Prison and the women's portion of the prison. Um, kids in the Garden, we do um, poison prevention programs, also known as Mr. Yuck, and um, just do a lot of works with like school gardens and things to help people get started. We have five idea gardens out at the um, Penn State Research Farm, which is out near Spooky Nook Sports Complex. And they're, they're really beautiful, especially in the middle of summer. There's a lot of educational signage out there. This is the, that was native plants. This is the butterfly idea garden. So those are some of the beneficial insects we do want to encourage. Um, we have a speakers bureau. We take a lot of information to events. We'll be taking a lot of spotted lanternfly information out this spring and summer. And we have an annual garden symposium, which is coming up on April 14th. And there are postcards out there if anyone is interested. It's a really interesting day. So if you're into gardening at all, I'd uh, encourage you to look into it. And I know some of your members have um, taken sponsorships for this in our little booklet that we hand out to our attendees and we, we thank you for that. Um, the symposium is very educational but also helps support our program so that we, we can even exist here in Lancaster County, as does our annual plant sale, which is always the first Saturday in May, right here in this room, which looks very different <laughs> on the day of the plant sale. And uh, there are postcards out there about that, too, and I'd encourage you to take one of those and please come back and support our plant sale. Okay, I, did, I thought I had a, our phone number on one of these pictures. Do not. Um, if you would see spotted lanternfly in Lancaster County, um, we are keeping track of, of where it is. So if you can call Penn State Extension or email Penn State Extension Lancaster County. It's very easy. You probably won't remember the number from today anyway, but 
look it up. It's very easy to find or just stop in down the hall when you come in for a rotary meeting and say, hey, I think, you know, I think we have this on our property and let us know who you are, where you live, just so we can kind of keep track of it. This um, has spread through South Korea um, very quickly in just a matter of a couple of years, and, and we're pretty in good shape here in Pennsylvania that it is spreading, but we're containing it pretty well. So we kind of need everybody to keep an eye out, um, report it, kill it, uh, if, you, if you do see it, and perhaps we can keep it from spreading throughout the state or to, into our neighboring states. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs>